Hi, and welcome to the Digital Job Site, where the boards are straight, the weather's great, and there really is a board stretcher. And I uh, just want to welcome new viewers to the Digital Job Site and some of these video tutorials for using SketchUp, and um, also welcome back anybody that's watched some of my previous videos on the Digital Job Site blog at findhomebuilding.com. And for those of you that have watched some recent videos, I've done a number of things about using SketchUp for doing math, calculating rafters and concrete volume and plot plans, and I thought it'd be good just to take a break and do a little fun drawing for a change. And with that in mind, I drew up this uh, what would be could represent a uh, an inlaid hardwood medallion. It could go in a in a hardwood floor. It could be done for tile or making a pattern for stamped concrete or something, but the process is, is fairly similar and it takes advantage of the uh, features that the Rotate tool that SketchUp has, um, features that it has to offer. And as you uh, know or would imagine, <clears throat> excuse me, medallion design can be, could be anything that you dream up. Uh, and I just created this medallion here. It's, it's based on a 16, uh, <clears throat> 16 point circle. I did a couple of them just to show some different ideas what can be done with a you know an inlaid ring around them. And uh, it can make a pretty attractive design and by doing it with SketchUp you can play around with the numbers of points, the shapes, and the angles and the colors of the wood and uh, kind of work up a design uh, to fit project needs or whatever. And uh, so these are the, the finished colored versions, but to get to that point, I started off with basically a, a geometric shape like this, and then uh, did the coloring work after to kind of spruce up the drawing. So with, uh, with that in mind, the way I got started, I'm just going to hide these things so they don't confuse our model, and get started again with drawing the basic 16-sided shape. And I started this circle right at the the origin point here so that I can align up some axes and make things work a little more simply. Let's see, I'm going to go back because I want to have that circle. Let's just make it an 18-inch radius that end up giving a three-foot circle. I'm going to reverse the faces and then by right-clicking the outside of the circle, I'm going to go to the Entity Info box and the default number of segments is 24. I'm going to back that off to 16. It makes drawing that particular medallion a little easier. And uh, Now I just want to take the circle and rotate it so that the one of the axes is, is uh, lined up with the world of SketchUp. I'll just kind of move this off over here. Uh, that that simplifies things in, in some of the drawing work. And now I'm going to right click this, right click just the circle, and give a give us a point at the center, which makes it pretty handy. You can get the point at the center by hovering around, but it's easiest to just get that point in the center and, and start off with that. And I've thrown in a guideline here with the protractor tool that'll get us set up to to um, to draw our first point and just for grins I'll draw a line in here right click it and then divide it and I'm just going to divide it in three segments that gives me a target to draw as soon as that clicks to a green circle I've got a, a target to draw the line to now when I pull this other line through, I get a green inference line and pretty quickly there uh, we can end up with a with one of the points for our drawing. And I'm going to make this a component and call it a long point and select the replace selection with component so that it creates that point. Uh, let's see. 
No, we are gonna. We don't want to name that again. I'm gonna. I'm gonna call this long point number two, so it doesn't confuse the previous model. So this is now a component. Uh, let's see. I deleted the circle, but I don't want to. I just want to take out. Actually. I'm going to make this a group. So we have now we have a component laying on top of a group that will help us keep the geometry separate. Anyway, so I'm going to take this component and we when, now when we grab the rotate tool, if I hit control, stretch out here to this point and then move it to our, uh, move it, uh, rotate it around and then um, Go 7x, it'll just duplicate that component all the way around. So just in a few steps, it's very easy to create all these points. Each one is a those are each one is a component. And uh, with that accomplished, we'll uh, do the same thing and create a smaller point, a component for a smaller point here with a guideline. And uh, let's just pull a parallel line off of here. I'm just going to arbitrarily make a smaller point. Uh, there's all manner of uh, ideas and shapes that a person could could make there. Uh, I'm going to make this short point number two, and uh, so we we can create another point. But the proportions here are. Um, you know, just up to what fits your eye or particular dimensions. We can make this point longer or shorter pretty easily, um, add to it, and do all kinds of variables on there. But the idea is to just create these points as components and, um, and then uh, paint your model to, to a look that you want. So I've selected that component and now I don't want to rotate it from this point, which just spins it on its axis. But if we uh, keep that as a selection and put the rotate tool to the back to the center of the medallion, pick up our short point, rotate it around, and again hit 7x. Uh, let's see, I failed in that case to use the control key. Okay, so I'm going to grab the rotate tool, hit the control. You see a little plus sign comes up here. That Tell SketchUp we want to not we want to rotate a copy of that, and by typing in seven x it it gives us seven of those, and we're getting this this flashing look here because um, there's two surfaces together. So now that we've got that done, I'm going to go into this group and delete the background of that circle, and that gives us gets rid of that Z flashing and gives us our this little point here. So that's the process for creating the points. You could do just any number of um, other designs um, adding to this. Let's see if we put a, a little square out here and rotate it till it's till it lines up. Didn't quite get that to line up like I wanted, but um, you can see we could do the same, the same process. Hit the control key, bring these around, seven X. You could add other features. You could add circles or diamonds or other points, any sort of uh, extra features you want. Um, so that's how I establish those the points, and. And do one more thing. We're going to take this, the group that has that outside circle, and because I don't want the medallion to have a faceted edge like that, I'm just going to bump this up to a multiple of 16. Let's go 48, and so it makes it a it makes it a round. Uh, it makes it a smooth circle. If we wanted to do a a two inch border. How about a two and a half inch border? We can get that. Delete and uh, if 
for some reason that is uh, being stubborn. And I'm going to go intersect faces and see if that will fix it. Yeah, there we go. I had to isolate this middle circle so that we ended up with a border. Let's see what's going on here. We've got some Z flashing going around here. I think uh, yeah, I got a double, a double surface there. I'm going to get rid of. Let's see. This is still being a fight here. I want to be able to delete the background and get rid of that Z flashing. Go back in there. Okay. Finally got that little situation straightened out. Put this back where it goes. And uh, so we've got the, the medallion geometry. We've got a border around it. And that leaves us one more little task here. And that is to make a... A... Uh, an infill section. I'm going to explode that curve, take that much of it, and copy it. Oops. I want to copy that, not paste something I had earlier. Okay, now when we come back in, I want to paste this curve here, and then just trace around these points with a new line. Zoom in to hit that point, and we'll add one more line here because if it was we're actually making this piece, it would probably there'd have to be a split there in the tile or wood or whatever is made out of. Reverse the faces, and then we're going to make this a component. We're going to call it infill number two. Create that. Now this process is getting familiar. We'll just grab this thing. I must have uh, grabbed something wrong there. I it wasn't lining up, so I'm going to try this again. Back. Move. Control. If I get my system down here, there we go. Now it goes 7x, and there's and there's the completed medallion geometry that I spoke of earlier. Showed at the beginning of the, uh, the at the beginning of the tutorial. Now it's just a matter of going in uh, to these separate components that we've created. You can see how it cre it selects um, a half of all the component. It's pretty easy to just paint these up. And it just changes the whole works at the same time. And you can go in, you can create custom wood colors. You can edit those colors and change the change the shades of them uh, if it's something you're trying to design and get your get your colors um, set up like you like. And uh, I'm going to select another color that's in the model here for this infill panel, and we'll just take. No, oh, let's see. I got one of those. Let's get them both. There we go. Get my clicks organized here, and we'll just give this a border. Give that border some color. So with those steps, uh, I hope I can give you an idea of how to uh, create this medallion um, and using. Uh, the various um, capabilities of SketchUp to uh, rotate, select, make components, uh, and and proportion things it can be a pretty simple process. And I think with a, a little forethought, you could come up with any number of uh, varieties or designs to, to suit the project you have at hand. Hopefully that didn't get too long or complicated, although I fear it probably did or I wouldn't be saying something about it. But... Uh, thanks for tuning in, and good luck with your 
design work. Thanks for watching at the Digital Job site.